Okay, I want you to help me out. I want you to close your eyes. Now, I want you to think about what it's like to age in America today. Do you have images in your mind? Come on now. Okay. Do you picture this? How about this? Come on, be honest, who pictured this? Okay, we admit it, that's not really fair given the title of our talk today. To be honest, we chose our title, No More Grandmas Eating Cat Food, to grab your attention and to make a point. Lots of us have either or views of aging. Either you're rich and healthy and living your dreams like our surfer dude, or you're sick and poor and living on cat food. Well, we're here to tell you that those are not your only choices. In fact, no matter what your circumstances are, right here, right now, there are steps you can take to be economically secure as you age. Absolutely. But let's face it, life after 65 has changed dramatically. Gone are mandatory retirements, pensions, and bingo games in church basements. We're working long past 65, both by choice and by necessity. And we're living longer, too. You know, it's interesting to think about a, a man today who's 65. He'll most likely live until he's 84, and for women, we'll live till 86. And if you're a couple, age 65, you actually have a 50% chance of living to 92. Unlike any generation before us, we now have an extra 60 plus years of life, whoops, 20 plus years of life to plan for. How will we do it? With our society chipping away at economic constants like pensions, social security, and Medicare, it can seem like planning for our future requires a crystal ball. But it actually only takes a few things. Number one, thinking ahead about retirement. Plan now for the future. Number two, understanding what help is available. And number three, knowing where to go when things don't really turn out like you planned. Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but I had an amazing grandmother. Vicenta, isn't she beautiful? I was her favorite. <laughs> but she was incredible. Didn't have a great education, but she knew that we had to invest in our future. It was about us. She made everybody feel empowered, especially the girls. And she's like, today, you go to school, because tomorrow, it's about your investment in your life. She used to trail me all the time and say, Ana Maria, keep going. And boys, wait till you're 30. Because to her, again, it was all about the numbers. I've got a few numbers for you. The first one, there's an estimate that says that it costs $14,000 a year to raise a child. Well, I have a son, his name is Michael Christopher, and I can tell you that number is actually pretty accurate. I think it's actually a little low. But how many of you know how much it costs each year to age? Anybody? Well, our partners at the University of Massachusetts Boston actually do have an estimate and a number for us. And this is what they say. If you are 65 and renting your home, you will need $23,000 a year just to cover your basic necessities. We're talking housing, heat, and food, not surfboards. Let's do the math. You need $23,000 a year for the bare essentials. Today, the average Social Security benefit is $16,000 a year, which leaves a gap of $7,000. So you turn to personal savings. And here's a statistic that may shock you. Among people retiring today, the median savings is $40,000. $40,000 total. So if you're looking to make up that $7,000 gap, with your savings. $40,000 will get you not quite six years, just for the basics. And remember, people are living 20 or more years past retirement these days. And unfortunately, women actually start further behind. 
they enter retirement with a huge hurdle that's followed them throughout their lives. It's called the pay gap. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right, ladies? Yes. Okay, now. It's called the pay gap, and it really causes issues for us because, again, we're entering retirement with less money saved and less money earned. And for women of color, there's even a deeper disparity. Overall, women earn nearly $4,000 a year less in Social Security benefits than men. But again, there's an answer. And for us, you know, we continue to work toward this issue because it's important that everybody's engaged and everybody knows what's possible. I have another number for you. Our friends at the in, in, it's Employee Benefit Research Institute stated that it actually costs women today to retire $143,000 just to cover her medical benefits and costs and issues during retirement. And that's with Medicare. So, what can you do to think ahead even if you haven't pay, spent, uh, saved a single penny so far? First, Start putting in time and effort. On a regular basis, develop, revisit, and refine a financial plan. You can do it alone, with a partner, or with a friend. Even better, do it with an expert. Key to your plan is a budget. See, that's really boring. I'm sorry, but it's a little boring. <laughs> yep, it's boring. Nothing fancy about it but you've got to know what's coming in and going out now as well as what your budget will look like in the future. It's also essential to reduce debt, limit your use of credit, and don't forget to pay yourself first by putting money into savings. With budgeting comes the requirement of discipline. Boring, boring discipline. <laughs> yes, Anna, it's boring especially in our instant gratification society. But without discipline, your plan will fall apart, and so will your dreams of a fulfilling retirement. There are great tools online that can help you. The Social Security Administration website, for example, will calculate your benefit depending on when you start to collect. And Ballpark Estimate helps you figure out how much to save for a comfortable later life. Well, that brings us actually to the second point we wanted to make, and that's knowing where to go for help if you need it. My friend, Mr. McNeil, is a good example of that. He enjoyed lifelong independence as a makeup artist and stylist of the stars of the Harlem Renaissance. But at age 80, his luck turned when his funds dried up. He was forced to move from his New York home in with his son in Delaware. This is not what he wanted. The good news is that Mr. McNeil turned to his local senior center for help. Now, if you think that senior centers are just places where old people sit around and play bingo, think again. Senior centers are fantastic places to socialize, learn new things, stay fit and engaged, and get help when you need it. At the Wilmington Senior Center, Mr. McNeil met with a financial coach from Delaware's Stand By Me program. Together they discovered he was eligible for an additional Social Security benefit that added $1,000 a month to his income. They also used the benefits checkup from the National Council on Aging and found extra food for healthy meals at home. Today, Mr. McNeil is independent once more. He lives in his own apartment, comes and goes as he pleases, and is most happy hanging out with his lady friends at the <laughs> senior center. Hey, I, I can see why he's so happy. Sue, you have great stories. Um, can you tell us a story around our third point, and that's where to go when things don't go as quite as planned? I can. And this story is about one of the people I treasure most in my life. My 98-year-old mother-in-law was a homemaker who raised five children. I'm married to Bill, number five. Clara was loved 
and well taken care of by her optometrist husband, who died nearly 30 years ago. He left life insurance, an annuity, social security, no mortgage, plus he had taken out a long-term care policy for her. A few years back, Clara moved into an assisted living residence where she quickly found friends. They eat together each day, talk politics, and reminisce. But four years into her new home, and Clara is running out of money. Now what? Fortunately for her, there's Medicaid. Clara never envisioned using it, and she's probably not someone that you can imagine needing it. But for Clara and millions of other older adults across our country, Medicaid is a lifesaver. With it, they are able to stay safe, secure, and happy in the place they call home. So here's our idea worth spreading. Aging shouldn't be something that just happens to you, like career decisions, education decisions, relationship decisions. You have to make thoughtful, deliberate choices about aging. You have to think ahead. You have to know where to go for help and what help is available. You know, at the National Council on Aging, we talk a lot about mastering aging. To us, that means aging with the best health, economic security, and independence possible for your situation. And it's also about thinking about the third stage of your life. Because in this society, we teach kids how to become adults, but we don't teach older people how to grow well, older, and safe. So again, we would love to engage you all in ensuring that you are embracing this stage of life. It's about you. It's about understanding what's possible. And like a good Girl Scout or Boy Scout, you can be prepared. Because being prepared means we can live the life we want to the very end without ever buying cat food. Unless that is, we have a cat. <laughs>